They say you shouldn't discuss politics, religion or money because it's going to lead to a head-to-head -head and uh, really fiery debates. I want to just explain to you what happens in those difficult conversations that can get really fiery. Let me explain it by telling you a little story a friend of mine called Paul experienced. Here's Paul. He's on his mobile phone and he's calling his internet service provider because his internet keeps dropping out. It's really important as a businessman working from home that he has good internet. And so Paul gets very frustrated and he phones up his supplier, who shall remain nameless, and at the other end is a lovely lady called Paula. Now, Paula has a swingy ponytail and she has one of those headsets that makes her feel a bit like Madonna. And she's sitting at her desk. I'm not sure what's her legs and what's the chair, but anyway, she's there at her desk. She's got a computer, she's got a keyboard. She may be working from home, but she's got it all set up there and uh, she's happy to help. Paula's not been in the job very long and she hasn't had a full induction in the way that, uh, you know, in the old fashioned days when people used to get a few weeks to get used to the job and meet all the different departments and all of those kinds of things. She's just in at the deep end. The only thing she remembers is that she was given um, a, a staff manual and the bit she remembers from that is that she doesn't have to take any abuse from customers on the telephone. She is allowed to just put the phone down if she feels harassed. So she's remembered that bit and uh, she's feeling a bit swingy with her ponytail. She's having a good day so far. And then Paul phones up because he's annoyed that his internet has gone out again. Now Paul is basically phoning up to defend his right to a good service. So he's in defensive mode. Paul is thinking, they aren't giving me what I am paying for. So he's already a little bit tetchy, but he's feeling that he's in the right. So he phones up and he gets Paula. Paula is happy to help and she asks him what the problem is. Paul describes the problem and Paula can hear the tension in his voice. Paul is angry and he's stating his situation, but he's doing so in such a way that whilst he feels he's defending himself, Paula feels it's an attack. Now, as a human being, what we do when we feel attacked is the stress response gets uh, switched on. So we've got adrenaline and cortisol, the stress hormones rushing around the body, and we start to feel that animal instinct, that need to defend ourselves. So Paula thinks to herself, I need to let him know that I've got the right to put the phone down if he's going to be abusive to me. So she defends herself. Paul, on the other hand, having hoped for somebody who's gonna help him out, feels that that feels a bit of an attack to him. He's feeling like she's having a go at him now. I don't have to listen to you. I'm allowed to put the phone down if you're going to be abusive to me. He's feeling like she's having a go at him. He's like, what's going on with this situation? It's completely switched around. It's crazy. So he now feels like uh, there's some attacking going on. So he defends, how dare you speak to me like that? He defends himself. Well, of course to Paula, that feels like another attack and on and on it goes. Each person feels all that they're doing is defending themselves and all the other person is doing is attacking them. But the same goes the other way around. So it becomes what's known as a defend attack spiral. And a few years ago, when I worked for a fabulous company called Huthway International, who were the developers of behavior analysis, which is where the defend attack uh, behavior title comes from. We talked about this defend attack spiral having really nowhere to go unless there's an absolute explosion and, uh, you know, a fisticuffs goes on or something happens to break the cycle. So my question to you is what's missing right now? What is neither Paul nor Paula doing? What is it that's missing? Well, the answer to that is nobody 
is asking a question. Everybody is busy making statements and a question stops this, stops this process. It means that we then, uh, we take a breather and we are ready, hopefully, to listen to the answer and then to acknowledge what the other person has said. Why doesn't that happen automatically? Well, the thing is that Paul doesn't realise that he's in this spiral, neither does Paula. What they're doing is not listening to the person, they're merely waiting to take their turn in order to prove why they're right. When everybody is waiting for a turn to, prov to provide evidence that they're right, nobody's listening to the other person. So these questions and the listening and the acknowledging of the other person's position is where we have to start from if we want to make any change in the way that the other person is feeling, thinking, behaving, or seeing the world. So right now, there are so many conflicts, you could name them all over the world, various conflicts on various issues. And if we want to move forward, we have to start here. Even if you are absolutely convinced that the other person is in the wrong, trying to prove that by talking at them and not listening to what they're saying just sends us into a defend attack spiral. It may feel like the right thing to do, that surely they just need to know this correct thing and then they will realise the error of their ways. Well, remember they're not listening because all they're doing is preparing for the other side, that they're going to come back at you to prove why they're right. This defend attack spiral means that conflicts continue, peace will never reign. I just wanted to share that with you because sometimes you feel like you're in the right and you can't imagine why the other person isn't listening to that and perhaps why they're escalating their aggression towards you. Remember, they're seeing you potentially as aggressive and they are feeling like they're just defending themselves. Any situation, even the most worst atrocities in the world in history, the person on the other side will be able to justify themselves. A part of the brain fires up pleasure when we get to feel that we are in the right. So we're gonna defend that no matter what. Realizing that and starting to ask questions, listen to the answers and acknowledge what the other person's saying even if you don't agree with it is the only way forward. I hope that this helps you to have some debates some hopefully some shifts in realizations yourself and to help other people to see your side of the story by taking it gently and not getting into a defend attack spiral and it might also sometimes make you realize that sometimes it really isn't worth it and you need to just choose a different battle.